big Lions news today, and that is that Josh Reynolds will not be back with the team. Josh Reynolds signs a two-year deal with the Denver Broncos uh, worth about $14 million, uh, $14 million total, so about $7 million a, a year. That money just too rich for the Detroit Lions. This feels like a significant signing uh, fr- from a guy of a guy that you no longer have. And I know the drops uh, in the NFC Championship game probably cost them a Super Bowl appearance and heaven forbid a Super Bowl championship because I do believe um, if they were to play in the Super Bowl, they would have beaten Kansas City. But nonetheless, he had a tremendous year, a little bit of an unsung hero uh, for this team this year. That's a void they'll have to fill. Can Jamison Williams do that? Absolutely. Can Donovan Peoples-Jones do it? Absolutely. But until they get into these situations and until they make these plays, it'll always be a question because Josh Reynolds for the last three years was as significant a player to this team as anybody. And I stand by that because of how big he's come up in so many situations, even in year one when this team was terrible and they had Brashad Perriman and Mike Williams uh, as their free agent signees that were busts. Jared Goff finally gets uh, a trade here uh, of Josh Reynolds to Detroit from L.A. Had an instant connection with him. And, uh, yeah, he's he's been a really good player here, Bray. But this, that, this feels big. Look, at the end of the day, and it's going to sound critical coming from me. I'm a wide receiver. But at the end of the day, I understand what they did. Look, he's been here three years, and what have they done in three years? Yeah, they got to the NFC Championship, but what happened when they finally got there? He dropped two passes. I'm not about to pay a wide receiver $7 million. You mentioned how good he was and how elite he was for the Lions last year. He was. Every other catch well, every catch was a first down, and if it wasn't a first down, it was a touchdown. But guess who else was the last year? Sam Laporta, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Amon Ross St. Brown. We saw what Jamison Williams can do at the end of the year. I'm not wasting $7 million, and I – I think it's a waste because I think you could do more with that money. Not a waste on a player like him. I'm not knocking his skill. Waste in terms of what you could do with that money. I'm not wasting $7 million a year on a guy. Not once, but twice cost me situations that could have had me in the Super Bowl. And we know for a fact one of those would for sure got them to the Super Bowl. I would prefer him being here. But $7 million, maybe they're going to spend it elsewhere. If they go spend it elsewhere, maybe they'll – I don't know what they're going to do with it. But it's money in in the coffers. And we'll see what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell devise. Because uh, Brad Holmes came out and said, cornerback, we don't need any cornerbacks. Did you hear that right. today? So I don't know where he's going to spend the money. So I guess we'll just hold on and, and see what's up. He, he seems to be happy with the free agent class that he brought in. Yeah, he is happy. In fact, he thinks it's the best free agent class they've ever signed. He talked earlier yesterday. I just feel real, really good. And, you know, our number one choices, that's our number one choices. There's 31 other teams, you know, it's 31 other boards. You know, our number one choices are probably not those other, those number one choices. But just like I said, it's, it's, it's for our palate, and those were our number one choices. And look, I have a lot of faith and, con- and conviction and confidence in our process because we go through every single scenario. Brad Holmes, Lions general manager, talking with Dan Miller of Fox 2. And, and yeah, this does feel like a really good free agent class. And Braylon, you know, um, this is the one player that I think they would have liked to have had back, just not at this price. You're you're, you're right about that. I mean, are you going to pay $7 million for Josh Reynolds? Probably not. Now, me, I like the player. I don't like that, right. that contract. Good for him, though, that he's able to go to Denver because they are really shy on weapons. So uh, he'll be pretty good there as well but uh, this has been a really really positive offseason for the Detroit Lions you know they say they got every number one target that they wanted Um, and maybe Josh Reynolds was not a number one target maybe they felt their number one target at the wide receiver position was Donovan Peoples-Jones that could have been the case as well because you talk about player ability and contract all of that gets rolled into one sort of want I would think at the end of the day, when are we going to stop questioning Brad Holmes? Like, that's what it seems like we're continuously doing. I, myself, am uh, 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 guilty of it as well. Look, 
They've been telling us from the start the guys they wanted to draft, the guys they wanted to pick up, the free agency guys they had last year. Ryan is exactly who they want to have. They wanted C.J. Gardner Johnson. They wanted Emmanuel Mosley. They wanted Cam Sutton. They wanted those guys. They picked those guys. They plucked those guys. And then fast forward to that draft. They went on and got the players that they wanted. And everybody came down on Brad Holmes. I don't know about this move. And you went and got a running back. And you moved back to do this. And you bring Jack Campbell, et cetera, et cetera. It worked for him. Did you see how good those rookies play last year? So when he's telling me that, hey, like, he tells us what he wants to do. He tells us what he's going to do all the time. So I think we need to start listening. And when they say this was the our top priority, we got all the ones we wanted, as opposed to think he's trying to trick the game and, you know, trying to sell us something and hope that it works out. Maybe we need to start saying those are the guys they really wanted. Those were the guys that w- they went after. Like you said, the 31 other teams – they can do things their way. Mm-hmm. We do it the Lions way. Just talking about uh, Brad Holmes and free agency and uh, getting his number one targets. You know, one guy that's been pretty vocal uh, lately, too, is Amik Robertson. Um, this is a player that the Lions signed from the Las Vegas Raiders at a position of need for this football team. Posted yesterday, I don't want y'all to feel like I'm trolling, but I think about Detroit every day. Can't wait. This really God's plan, we can do something special. And I think one of the things that Brad Holmes has done in acquiring players, and uh, Calvin Johnson alluded this, alluded to this yesterday as well when we were speaking about Amon Ross St. Great Brown. Great interview, by the way. It was a, great, was a great interview. interview by the way. Um, when we were speaking about Amon Ross St. Brown, and the first thing that came to mind for Calvin Johnson, when it's like, how does this player who's passed over you know, uh, over 120 times, uh, over 100 times by NFL teams, uh, this little uh, uh, undersized wide receiver from USC who fell to the fourth round, who comes to this uh, Detroit Detroit Lions team when it's a terrible situation and turn himself into one of the league's top wide receivers. How does that happen? And he said, got a chip on his shoulder. And I think one of the major themes that Brad Holmes has, uh, you know, almost sought out when it comes to acquiring players is that chip on the shoulder. And, you know, whether it's a guy like Brian Branch, who was looked over uh, in the first round of the draft last year to an Amon Ross St. Brown, um, to an Amik Robertson, who is, an undersized cornerback, you would say, but they, they say plays like a, just a pit bull out no, there. You, you, um, you. It's just, that's the way they have built this team and it has been successful. Whoa. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like that is actually it. We're sitting here finding out how in which they go about getting their guys. And we talk mm-hmm. about, well, they make sure the guys fit the lions program. They make sure the guys fit how Dan Campbell coaches. They make sure the lions fit grit and villain. Right, that's exactly it. You start naming the players that dropped around, whether it was Amon Ross St. Brown, he dropped, whether they told Jack Campbell he was too slow, loud, whether Jameer Gibbs, who started at Georgia mm-hmm. Tech and then gets to Alabama, told he was too small and didn't mm-hmm. have success. Jamison Williams started Ohio State, had to leave because he couldn't make the field. All these players have a chip on their shoulder. Mm-hmm. All these players are buying in, too. Let's not, get any, let's not mistake that for a minute. They're watching what Dan Campbell has built. Nine, when do you have to go back to the first year? Look at look at the free agents. You just, uh, you know, look at uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. You don't think over. he's got a ch- chip on his shoulder Passed right now? Over. He's a fourth-round draft yeah. pick. He goes to Cleveland. It doesn't work out in Cleveland, although he had some really good years. 100% that is the guys they get and they stick. You mentioned Brian Branch last year. Like, that's how they fit their team. That's how they fit these guys. But you know what happens in that? These guys know their role, which is something that it's hard sometimes to get an all-star cast or all-star uh, rosters, you're trying to get everybody to know their role. Everybody wants to be the star. Everybody knows their role here. Everybody plays their role, whether it's Khalif Raymond, whether it's Amon Ross St. Brown, Event Sam Laporta, mm. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery. David Montgomery is a starter. Now Jameer Gibbs is a starter. Everybody's David playing. Montgomery's another one. You don't when think he came he here last came, year. Came here last year with a chip on his shoulder from he Chicago. Wanted to do better, showing me he was better than that. Also, mm. what did he say? He said, I don't care if I'm passing out water in Detroit. Mm. I just can't wait to get to that team. I think that's what you're saying when you meet Roberts this year. It's a treat to come mm. to Detroit Lions now. 12-5, and five, they won the North. They were in the NFC Championship. It's a real treat to come to this team. So you better be willing to play your role, and you better be willing to play it to the best of your ability. I said it, man. Yeah, Day that's two good of stuff, the draft Ryan. yesterday, last year. Brian Branch waiting there. Got out of his suit, 
put on some some uh, Jeans. sports clothes. The whole, he looked great. And he waited to hear his name called. And he celebrated on the stage with the commissioner, Roger Goodell, and then with the Lion fans, all the pictures he's taken. It, he, you knew he was coming here to play ball and to take names. You know, look back, see who hit me. I'll get you later. And that's exactly what he did. And he had a phenomenal rookie year with injuries on top of it all. And it started with game one when he takes a pick six back pick against Patrick Mahomes. You, 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 you can't dream up a mm -hmm. better rookie start scenario for Brian Branch. Gets passed over in the first round, gets drafted in the second round. Like you said, Mass, he stays. He still goes on stage. Plays against Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback mm. maybe ever when it's all said and done. Well, when it's all said and done, he will be. Pick six, first game, that's how you start. Like, that's a dream career start. I want to go back to something you said earlier uh, just a moment ago, Braylon, about, you know, guys like David Montgomery saying they don't care what their role is. Yeah. They don't care if they got to pass out water. And that is obviously because of the culture created in the building in Allen Park. But two, because... The goal is now that yeah. this organization, this football team, these players, these coaches believe they can actually win the Super Bowl, not just get to the playoffs, not win a playoff game, not host a playoff game, but win a Super Bowl. And that is the goal for this franchise. Dan Campbell talked about that at the NFL meetings in Orlando. And I'll tell you what you realize when you really watch it and you just are, just give us general thoughts is, Matt, those – San Francisco willed that to happen. They had players that, man, they, they in critical moments, that quarterback made big plays. McCaffrey made big plays, made a big catch. IU made a big catch, 15 over the middle for a first down. And they willed those things to happen. And that'll just, that's the next step for us. And so I think we've got to put a tremendous amount of stress on our players before the season gets here, uh, starting in OTAs, but then certainly in training camp, a lot more than we have. And, uh, and just, mold them and shape them and get them there but but that experience is going to that'll play well to us because look you're either going to get better from it or you'll you'll just get worse because you're broken and i just we're not going to break we're just not so uh we got two good guys and uh so i'm it's exciting that is as solid as it gets i love that that is a you, you either no matter where you are in life you either get better get or worse. You get worse. Because staying the same is getting worse. And that's just it. Yeah. Because people will always continue to pass you by. Yeah. So uh, being stagnant, being stale, not getting better, it's just a, it's just a, it's another way to get worse, I believe. Yeah. And this football team will not break, as Dan Campbell pointed out just there. I don't believe they'll break at all. Like, I think they will get better. I think they've made their team better in the offseason thus far with the free agent moves. That they've done and also too look man they got there they got that close they didn't play the blame game that's a lot that's one thing you see new teams that get to that space or even old teams sometimes you get the point in the finger and it's this guy or maybe it's that guy or you know if we would have done this or we wouldn't have done that they never said that they never went down there in fact Dan Campbell doubled down on the things he did nobody pointed the finger at Josh Reynolds or Jameer Gibbs like nobody pointed the finger so they stayed together when you stay together like that mass through a situation like that now you guys are building together. Now you don't think that team is already here getting ready for the season? You don't think they started running together, working out together, watching film on last season, on how we can get just a little bit faster in our routes, how we can be time up the passes a little bit better. Jared, the offensive line, these guys are here. They're ready to rock and roll.